If you look in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 1, 11, 29. And it says, For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You know, when we don't accept Jesus, we're already in trouble. You know? We sang that song, Redeemed, And can you put that up on the screen? Redeemed or not? Do you have the words? Okay. I want to go over that for a minute. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. See, and that's what this communion service is about, the blood covering and washing away of our sins. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. How many believe that this morning? Okay. And I want you to notice the next line says, his child and forever I am. Regardless of whether you accept him or not, he's still, you know, we're still his children. He's still our Father. Okay? Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No rapture, no language my rapture can tell. You know, how happy we can be no matter what happens to us. You know, that nothing can take that from us. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. You know, he's put his spirit within us at all times, everywhere we are. And just when we need him, he's always there. He's always near. I know there's a crown that is waiting. Well, I don't know why he's going to give us a crown. But that's what he's chosen to do. And yonder bright mansion for me. And soon with the saints made perfect. And that's, that's something that we long for. Because we know how terrible we are. And at home with the Lord I shall be. What a precious song that is. As I begin this morning, let me open with prayer. Loving Father, we ask that you would be with us, and Father, that you would bless the reading of your word in our hearing. May it touch our hearts, and Father, that uh, we would be drawn closer to you. Touch these lips is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Ever since sin entered this world in the garden, God has had sacred ceremonies for us to perform. He gives us specific instructions about each one of them. And um, no human should or ever try to change them. At the beginning of sin, God instructed Adam to offer sacrificial animal to represent atonement or at one meant for our sin to bring us back to him to reconcile us to him as part of our worship requirement to him and both Cain and Abel knew this and so I'd like you to look at the first text here and found in Genesis 4 2 it says, now Abel kept his flocks, and Cain worked the soil. 
Verse 3 goes on to say, And in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to, to the Lord. What did the Lord require? A lamb. Why? Because it represented him and because it had blood. Representing the washing away of our sin. And also representing something else, that our sin caused the death of those animals. <clears throat> so Cain brought fruit. That's not what God asked for. <clears throat> And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions, from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor upon Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face down, was downcast. <clears throat> Who should Cain be upset with? himself. But what did, what did he do? He took it out on his brother. <clears throat> and it says Cain became very so angry that eventually he killed Abel. And that resulted in Cain being cursed by God. And we read in verse 12 the consequence of him killing his brother. And he says, you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. I want you to notice what it says here, restless wanderer. Now, God could have done away with Cain. But he was trying to teach a lesson. I want you to think about something this morning. When we sin against God we become a restless wanderer. Now, I have a testimony anywhere here to, this morning? <laughs> higher, higher. <laughs> yes, that's right. Surrender all. Isn't it true, though, that we become a restless wanderer when we wander away from God? We don't know where to go, and we don't have no peace no matter where we go. It's very important that we take God's instructions seriously. And each ceremony that God set aside in his word represents an aspect of God's character. Character of love and of sacrifice for each one of us. You parents understand that you would give your life for your child if it would save them. Because you do anything for your child. And that's what God did for us. Because we're his children. And throughout the Old Testament, we find example after example of consequences for disobeying God's instructions. Concerning his holy ceremonies and even his furniture. <clears throat> you remember on the way to Egypt... The angel of the Lord almost slayed Moses because he had not circumcised Isaac. In the wilderness, <clears throat> Aaron's two sons were slain because they brought strange fire into the sanctuary, showing dishonor and disrespect for God. In the time of King David, Uzzah was slain because he reached out to study the ark and he wasn't a priest. Because the Levites were all, the only ones that could touch the ark. And we all remember the last plague on Egypt before Pharaoh let Moses lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And the firstborn sons were killed that did not have the blood over the doorpost and on the lentils. 
Okay? And the only way was to prevent that was to have that blood. You know, it's interesting to note <clears throat> that some of the Egyptians did that same thing. And I dare say that probably there were some Israelites that didn't. Thus, the Passover service was begun by Jesus. And to deviate from God's instruction was fatal for the firstborn sons there. It was essential for Israel to follow God's instructions for every ceremony in the Old Testament era. It was a type and a shadow pointing to the reality of Christ as our sacrifice. However, when Jesus came, that reality, the Lamb of God, the types and shadows were about to come to an end. And when he hung on that cross for our sins, when he was buried in the tomb and then raised on the third day, the first day of the week, the Old Testament ceremonies ceased. But in the New Testament era, <clears throat> there's one ceremony, and we're going to experience that this morning. And these ceremonies established by Christ before his death, including the Lord's Supper, are as important to observe with respect and honor as they were in Old Testament times. And maybe now even more important, because it shows our rededication to him. It shows that we're dependent on him for life. <clears throat> and now maybe more than ever before he comes we need to tell him how much we love him and want to rededicate our lives to him amen <clears throat> and to neglect this new testament ceremony that jesus himself instituted would lead us to miss the wonderful blessing that christ intended for each and every believer. Understand many people today have forgotten the true significance of what took place of the animal sacrifices that happened each and every day. You know, a few years ago, kids said, you know, when, when they saw a deer or something be killed, and they said, you killed Bambi. But we don't really understand what, what they went through. Their pet lamb, whatever, that was killed just because of their sin. We don't see that death all the time. And so we've gotten sort of removed from what really took place, that Jesus gave his life. He gave his all. Hebrews 10.4 <clears throat> says, For it is impossible for them to take away sin. The animal sacrifices couldn't do it. They just placated it until Jesus came. And the tr great truth <clears throat> that through Christ alone there is forgiveness of sin. How many are thankful for the forgiveness we have? Yeah. 
Christ alone gives us forgiveness. And Jesus occupies the unique position of being the offerer and the offering. Of being the priest, but also the victim. So it's important that we observe <clears throat> with respect and honor of what we're coming to the table for this morning. And now more than ever before he comes, <clears throat> as we approach the day of his soon return, to neglect this would be to miss a blessing that God wants for each one of us. And so my last text, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine. for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. It's a double-edged sword, sort of. <clears throat> because when we don't partake, we miss out. If we take, take it unworthily, we're still not doing it in the right frame of mind. So at this time, I'm going to be joined by Alberto and Margarita, I believe. I want you to, to remember that line. It says, standing on the promises when fears and doubt assail. You know, we've got to stand on his promises. That we are his children and that he loves us very much. So much that he reached out his hands and died in our place. I mean, that's, that's uh, something. So, on the way out <clears throat> this morning, as is our custom, we will have a special offering for those that may be in need within the church. So, uh, the usher will have a basket out there or something <clears throat> for that purpose to give to those that may be in need within the church family, okay? So let me pray. Loving Father, we ask that you might bless each one. This morning we've come before you because we need you more than ever. We've taken the, the bread. We've chewed it because of our sins, have chewed the life out of you. We've, uh, we've drank the, the cup, a symbol of your shed blood. <clears throat> shed that we might have life that you might wash us because it's only by your death that we have the opportunity for life eternal. So Father, this morning as we depart from this service, help us as we've renewed our commitment to you to live by it until you come. We ask, Father, a blessing on each and every one that we might draw closer and closer to you, that we might stand on the promises, that we might sing redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb each and every day, and that we might remember <clears throat> that you purchased us at a terrible cost one that can never be repaid, that we can only accept by, by grace. So Father, help us to remember what all you accomplished on the cross for us, of your infinite love for each one. And may we praise you until the day you come, and then forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat>